Hi, my name is Peter, and I will be describing the mathematics behind Big O. So, what is Big O? Well, of course we know it's a way we categorize algorithms for the runtimes, but really it falls under the category of asymptotic notation. Big O, theta, and omega all fall under this types of notation. Um, mostly in comps A, B, you'll be focusing on Big O. Um, it basically describes a way a function is heading towards a certain number or a uh, certain number. Most of this time, it heads towards infinity for our cases. As the you know, as n uh, n grows bigger and bigger, we care about how big our function gets. Now, here is a math. I'm going to explain the math behind it. So, we're going to start with an example. If we have a runtime function of about of this. It's a very strange runtime function. I doubt it will ever come up in real life. We want to find the big O of this. Now, obviously, we know it's going to be 2x squared. We know it's going to be x squared. It's going to be O of x squared. But, how do we actually prove this mathematically? We need a definition for big O. So let's define big O. Big O has certain conditions to it. We need our big O fun We're going to first call our function inside of O, g of x. So, if we remember from examples before, let's say we have a runtime function of n squared plus n, our big O inside of it would be n squared in here. So let's say our g of x is n squared. We need our g of x function to somehow outgrow our f of x function for all values about a number. If it's not outgrowing it, of course it's going to be less than it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to simply just multiply the constant number m by the absolute value of g of x. This will prove to see if a number is at, if it's greater than the actual function. If all these values above of m times g of x for ex are above some number are greater than or equal to our are greater than or equal to our function above some number, we have proved that our function is a function of o of g of x. In sum, basically this this is the sum of what we mean. So, this doesn't mean for all values of x our function is greater than m. It means that for certain values from x from a certain value to infinity or whatever number we're heading towards, those are the numbers that it should be greater than. So, if we look, work through this one, we're going to prove that our 2x squared minus 10x plus 13 is big O of x squared. So, we uh, first graph it, right, and we can obviously see that our x squared uh, function is obviously less than our original 2x squared minus 10x plus 13. We need to somehow, pr we need to prove that it's bigger than this function. So what we do is we have to increase our constant k times x squared to prove that it is big O. Let's try 1.25 as our constant m. Now it's going to be 1.25 times x squared and we have to prove that it is bigger than 2x squared minus 10x plus 13. As you can see 1.25 is still too small. It is still smaller for some values of x, for very large values of x. Let's try 1.5. 1.5 is still too small for our function. For very, it's our, this function still outraces this function for most values of x. Let's try 2. 2 works perfectly. 2, two from all values of 1.3 to infinity, we can see that it out, our 2 times x squared is bigger than our original 1. So we have proved that uh, f of x is o of g of x from our original definition. We found a constant k and by proving, finding that constant k, we found that from all values from 1.3 to infinity of this function are greater than our original runtime function. We have proved that this function, this number here, is now big O of this function. Let's try an example where it isn't the case. Well, first off, the algebraic proof. So let's say we have 2x squared minus 10x plus 13 and we set it less than or equal to 2x squared, which is our original definition. I removed all the absolute value signs, it would just make it less complicated for us to solve. If we cancel out the 2x terms from both sides, we get 
this is the remainder. We divide by negative 10 and we flip the inequality signs because we divide it by a negative number. This is just simple algebra 1 or 2 inequalities. That means x, it's true for all values above 1.3. So our union is 1.3 to infinity and therefore since our runtime is only concerned about a big O and we're only concerned about values heading towards infinity, since it's greater than 1.3, we have proof that it satisfies our condition of big O. We all, we are, it is all important that we satisfy this condition right here. We multiply by some constant, and we prove that it's a bigger than some, uh, we, we prove that for all values above some number, x naught, that m of g of x, m times g of x is bigger than our original runtime function. So here's another example, uh, e to the x plus x squared. Now, of course, we obviously know that it's order of e to the x. It's an exponential function. Let's try to prove to see if it is an order of x squared and see if x squared will fill, fit under this, fit under our proof. So, of course, obviously, 1 as our constant does not work. Let's try a huge value of a thousand, right? A huge uh, big value of a thousand. Now obviously a thousand times x squared is much 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 is never going to uh, a thousand times x squared is still smaller than e to the x plus x squared for extremely large values of x squared. Uh, I, I know it's not shown, it's cut off, but this is around 200 and 300 here. It doesn't matter what k is. For certain values of x it will not matter what this is. This function will be always smaller than this function no matter what. Uh, if you're looking for an algebraic proof, uh, this one will use the mean value theorem in calculus and it will be actually kind of complicated to solve because you would have to use induction as well. Uh, as well as because you have to use different values of k. It would, it's past this, uh, it's past the uh, AB curriculum. So we can see that obviously for even large values of a thousand and stuff, it just doesn't fit, you know. It, no matter how big we make k, this function will be always greater than for some x larger than x is larger uh, for even large values of x. E, uh, yep. So now remember this function Fibonacci, I said I would prove it in the previous video. Well, this one uses something called proof by induction, and it is something that's kind of used in college courses and uh, probably will be learning it in your math classes. Uh, proof of induction is simply proving that if if the base case one is true, therefore, and we can prove that, then we can prove that if n is true, we can also prove that for all functions above m plus 1, m plus 1 is also true and m plus 2 would be true and m point 3 plus true. We basically use a domino effect and we kind of prove that if we can prove one case is true, we can prove the next case is true. Um, this is also past the curriculum, but if you are interested, you can continue to watch. Uh, so basically the proof is really simple. We define our Fibonacci function as this. We need to prove it. It is um, based on uh, big O, we need to prove that is to a order of 2 of n. So what we do is we do our constant times c of 2 of n is less than or equal to Fibonacci of n. We need to do a proof of induction, which means we have to prove this statement here. Um, this also has a logical proof and basis to it, but quite simply this is the statement you have to prove. Um, you have to, then once you divide by c times 2 times n to the minus 1, you basically get 1 plus 1 half is less than or equal to 2, which proves that it is big O of uh, 2 to the n. Uh, this is very vague, and I know it doesn't go into much detail. If you're looking for more detail, uh, you can definitely Google this up and s see if you want to prove it for yourself. Uh, that basically covers most of big O. If you have any questions, um, you can email Mr. Sarker, who will probably email me. All right, thank you for watching.